Okay, so today we're going to go over questions number 39, and we're going to go over questions number 46 and 47 on my QAS practice test. So let's go ahead and get started. It's telling us to use a table below to answer number 38 and 39. So we're going to be using this table here. 39 says the table above shows a survey of 25 students who will be getting the dessert at their school play. Each student was asked which flavor ice cream they would choose along with which topping they would prefer. Out of the students who chose sprinkles as a topping, how many students would also choose chocolate as their preferred ice cream flavor? So out of all the students who chose sprinkles, how many students would also choose chocolate? So let's go ahead and look at out of all the students who chose sprinkles. So sprinkles is here. That means we're looking over across at this row. So out of all the students who chose sprinkles, that is gonna be our denominator. The total number of students who chose sprinkles is 15. And out of those 15 students who chose sprinkles, how many chose chocolate? So chocolate is here. So 10 chose chocolate. 10 out of 15 would be the fraction to represent the probability. But now we have to go ahead and reduce it. So we're gonna divide the top and the bottom by the greatest common factor, which is five. 10 divided by five is two. 15 divided by five is three. So two over three would represent how many students who out of the students who chose sprinkles who also chose chocolate. So the answer to 39 should be two over three, which is B. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the other two questions. Questions number 46 and number 47. So it says triangle A, B, and C lies in the XY plane and the coordinates of the vertex C are two, three. The triangle A, B, and C is rotated about the axis 180 degrees clockwise, then reflected across the axis to produce triangle A, B, C, where the vertex C corresponds to the vertex C of triangle A, B, and C. What are the coordinates of C? That was a mouthful, but all they're saying is this triangle here that we're looking at is going to be rotated about the axis and then reflected. Where will that triangle land and what will be the vertex of or the coordinate of C or the angle C once it's rotated and reflected? How do we do that? Before we go ahead and do the rotation and the reflection, I just want you to know that in each one of these coordinates, so we're going to start with this one, um, in each one of these coordinates, in each one of the coordinates, um, I hope I labeled that right. I can double check after. But in each one of the coordinates, um, the, the X and the Ys are always going to be the same. So for example, if you have a point that's in this coordinate, the X is going to be positive, and then the Ys are also going to be a positive. If it ends up in this quadrant, all the points, it doesn't matter where the point is, the X is going to be negative, and the Y is going to be a positive. If the triangle ends up in this third quadrant, then the X is going to be negative, and the Y is also going to be negative. It doesn't matter where the point lands. If it's in this section, that's what it's going to be. And if our triangle ends up in this quadrant, then any of the points are going to be negative and po wait, positive x and a negative y. So no matter what we end up doing with the triangle, flipping it, rotating it, if our triangle lands in any one of these quadrants, then we automatically know whether the x is supposed to be positive or negative and whether the y is supposed to be positive or negative. So let's go ahead and see how that applies. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna follow the instructions. It says it's rotated about the axis 180 degrees. Every time you rotate it, it's 90 degrees. So this would be 90 degrees. Another 90 degrees would be 180. So the triangle would end up in this quadrant here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna highlight the quadrant where it's gonna end up. Okay, then it says it's reflected across the x-axis reflected as if it's a mirror place on the x-axis and if this triangle was mirrored it would end up here okay now 
the triangle may look different, but we're not going to go into details with that because that can be confusing. We just want to know where the triangle is going to end up. So at the end of rotating it and um, flipping it, it ends up in this quadrant here. And do you remember what we said about this? The X's have to be negative and the Y's are going to be positive. So all you have to do is look at these answers and see in which one of these answers, A, B, C, or D, is the X negative, well, in A or B, so the answer can't be C or D, and then we need a positive Y, so the answer must be A, because it's a negative 2 and a positive 3, a negative X and a positive Y. We're going to go ahead and do another problem that's similar to this. Now that I've ex explained it, it'll be much simpler. So let's go ahead and look at this question number 47. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. It says triangle XYZ lies in the XY plane and the coordinates of the vertex Z are negative six, negative one. The triangle is rotated about the axis a 90 degrees counterclockwise, then reflected over the Y axis to produce a new triangle. What are the coordinates of Z? So again, we just got to figure out where this triangle is going to end up, and then we can figure out whether the coordinates, what the coordinates are have to be, whether they have to be positive or if they have to be negative. So we're going to go ahead and rotate it about the axis 90 degrees, but instead of going this direction, we're going to go counterclockwise, which is that direction. So we're going to end up doing 90 degrees, and it's going to end up here after the first 90 degrees. Then it's reflected over the y-axis. So this is the y-axis, and this is where the mirror is going to be. And when you reflect it, you just flip it onto the other side. So it's going to end up, actually, in the same place that it started. Again, we're not going to focus on what the triangle is going to look like, but we're going to just focus on where does the triangle end up. So because the triangle ends up in this quadrant, we have to ask ourselves, what do we know about the x and the y of any points in this quadrant? Well, the x are going to be negative and the y's are negative. So now we're just going to look at our answers to see which answer choice has a negative for the x and a y. A, negative 6, which is an x, and negative 1, which is a negative y. The answer is negative 6, comma, negative 1. If this was easy for you, please let me know. If it was a little bit complicated, I completely understand. I just want to thank everyone who has been purchasing my practice tests, no, they don't come with um, videos attached to it, but I have done quite a few videos going over quite a few different problems, but this is just an extra one to go over some extra problems that were sent to me. But again, if you ever need extra support, then go ahead <clears throat> and just let me know in my email. Um, sometimes you can just send me a problem or two and I put, could potentially help you with that. But if it's more than that, I may end up needing to schedule a tutoring session with you. If you would like tutoring, I'm going to put my calendar in the description below um, and then my prices and the, my availability can be found in my calendar. As always, I think you guys are doing a great job and I'll see you in the next one.